12. Here's the promise of all promises, Revelation 22, 4. They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. Let's deal with the latter one first. His name will be on their foreheads. This metaphor implies two things. One is likeness. This is so great. Likeness. You will be like Christ, like he will have done what he was going to do. He worked everything together for the good of those who loved him and were called according to his purpose, and he caused them to be little mini Jesus boys and girls. Like the family resemblance will be very great at that point. You will be like, you'll be you, but you'll be very much like Christ. Like it will have worked, sanctification will have been done. As you died, boom, you are done, baby. You're ready, you're in, you're it. You are like Christ. It's your personality, but it's also his personality, which is what he's been working in through all these trials all this time. So it's likeness, but it's also ownership. Recently, my family and I went to see Toy Story 4, and we were reminded of the Toy Story mythology that when a toy is super special to a human, like Woody was to Andy, maybe the kid will write their name on the boot of that toy. And what is that kid saying? It's saying, this one's extra special to me. This one is my treasure. I, I don't want anyone to get confused that maybe it's theirs because it's not theirs, it's mine. And Jesus Christ himself, figuratively speaking, so wants you to know how valued you are that he says, I'm gonna write my very name on you to say, mine. I went to the earth, I died in their place, I bought them, and they are mine. See, it's, it's so human of us to question our value. It's so common of us. You know, the world doesn't necessarily value us much, definitely doesn't value us the way that Christ values us. And even Jesus, I mean, we all know this, can we just own this? Jesus is invisible, dude. And so it's not always easy to receive encouragement from him. It's a, it's a big faith walk. Here, we walk by faith, but then... We will walk by sight. And Jesus wants us to know, I so value you, you will never question your value to me again. You will know forever that you are my special treasure. And everybody there will know that they are his special treasure and he will be the special treasure of all of them. That's how that works in heaven. So he will write his name on us, but it also says they will see his face. He wants us to see his face. He wants, he's so, are you hearing this? He so wants to be with you that he already had everything. He left it and came to get you. And then when he was here, this is what he said to his disciples, also saying to us, John 14, 3, when I go to prepare a place for you, I will return and take you to be with me so that where I am, you will be too. Um, how many know that Jesus didn't need any more apartments? He was already the king of king of king of king of kings, okay? He didn't need anything else, but he says, I'm so into you. I'm going to, like, come get you. I'm going to buy the reason you get to come into my presence. But then while I'm away, I'm going to be creating a space that is set apart for you. Do you see why he said it right there? So that where I am, you will be too. Jesus says to you, I don't really want to be anywhere where you're not, so I'm going to make a special place for you because I need you to be with me. You can shout hallelujah anytime you're ready that your God values you like that. And we're going to find that beholding the face of our God is the very best part of heaven. We've got to know that our Old Testament counterparts would have been shocked to hear the idea of beholding the face of God. That's just not something that happened, man. That's what we lost in the fall. You don't get to see God. In fact, Moses was told by God, hey, Moses, listen, um, I'm going to let you see my afterglow. I'm going to put you in the crevice of this rock here. I'm going to pass by. You're going to like kind of see the sunset of God, but you can't see my face, Moses. If you saw my face, you'd die. You can't handle it. Like your, 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 your body of flesh, dude, it would be like a cup of water thrown into the sun, just... It just missed into nothingness. Like that's what happens if you look at the face of God in your fleshly body. So they would have been pretty weirded out about the idea of seeing God face to face, but not anymore because of the blood of Jesus Christ, because his redemption was full. 
you and I will see him face to face, even though no flesh can see him because he's the center of everything. It wouldn't be heaven if you didn't get to behold Jesus. And this is what really, you know, the good place, that's the TV show that we kind of ripped off the title for this series from. Like so many, like I think it's a cute show. Now I watch it with filters, so there's a lot of hell that I miss, okay? But I, you know, I think they're, they're lovable characters and they're funny and there's kind of a thing that you don't really realize is going on at first. But at the end of the day, it's more man-centered heaven. I mean, that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? It's like, this is about you. This is about your reward or lack of reward or whatever. You get this many points and you get in or you don't get in. But it's really still heaven is about you. And, and like so many books, like so many TV shows, if God is there at all, he's some kind of like supporting character. Like God is in the Jar Jar spot. Like, Brezhus, God is not Jar Jar, okay? God is not the supporting cast. He doesn't get, you know, th- that's not his role. He is the center of heaven. Anytime anybody talks about heaven and they're not talking about Jesus as the center of it, they're missing something major because it wouldn't be heaven without Jesus. And Jesus even told us about this. John 17, three, he's praying. He says, this is eternal life that you, that they may know you. He's praying for his disciples that they may know you, the father, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you've sent. You see, Jesus says, here's here's a secret for those who trust in Christ's blood to save them. You already started accessing eternal life here on earth. Like you already broke through, you're already getting some of it, you're drinking from eternal life. But there, you're gonna get the unfiltered version. See, here you've been licking your fingertips for the juice of eternal life. You're getting little bits of it. There, baby, you're gonna get the whole doggone orchard. Here, you do, I mean, you experience God's presence. You come in here and you feel his flow and you're in his word and you, you experience these rhema rays and it's kind of like you're getting little, little, little drops of, of sauce. Baby, there you're getting the whole pizza, okay? Here, you're getting little, oh, little splotches of butter. There, you get this church-sized bucket of popcorn, man. That's what it is to get the real eternal life. It starts here, but the fullness of it is only experienced in heaven, and that is by beholding eternal life himself, Jesus Christ.